Hi everyone, all right, so in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to combine Mixamo animations together to create a continuous running sequence. So something in the past that a lot of people had trouble with is trying to figure out how to get an animation to continue running from where a previous animation stopped. So I'll show you how to do that. We'll be setting up this entire scene with this ninja that runs forward, he turns around and he falls over. So it's gonna be really simple to do and at the end, you'll even be able to duplicate the animation and bring in multiple uh, versions of that sequence. So it's really fun and easy to do. We'll be using Mixamo and Cinema 4D. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so head on over to Mixamo.com and sign in. So this is a fantastic website for finding mocap data uh, that you can apply onto some characters. You can even upload your own character. So I've headed over to characters. I'm on page one and I'll be using this ninja. Now you can use whatever character you want. And then once you've got your character selected, let's head on over to animations. So a good general rule of thumb whenever you create an animation is to start with a T-pose. So in search, I'm going to type T-pose. And you'll see over here we have the T-pose. So select that and we want to click on download. So we want to download the FBX with skin. Then click on download and save that to your desktop or into a folder so everything is nice and organized. So I'm going to be grabbing three animations from the library. I'm just going to type run press enter. So I want this run in animation. And if I decrease the overdrive, it's actually going to slow down how fast our character is running. So it's actually going to create more of a jog. So I'm going to put this value, my overdrive on 30, and then I'm going to download this. So I'm going to download this as well with FBX and with skin. And our second animation is also going to be under the run category. And it's this running animation where the character turns around. So just select that and I'm going to decrease the overdrive to 40 just to slow it down a little bit and I'm going to download that. And our last animation, I want to type in fall, press enter and I want this fall flat animation. So once you've got all three animations downloaded, actually let me decrease the overdrive on here as well. So I'll put this on 40. Here we go. Download that. So once you've got all three animations downloaded, we are good to go and we can head over to Cinema 4D. So I place all of my animations into its own folder so everything is nice and organized. Now let's open up Cinema 4D and the first animation that we want to import is the T-Pose. So that's going to be our starting pose and our starting animations. So go to File, Merge Objects. I'll be going to my folder over here and I want to bring in the T-Pose. Now these are my import settings so I'm going to leave everything default. Click on OK. When this message pops up about reassigning the takes, you want to click on No. And there we go. So the first thing you want to do is, it doesn't matter how many objects are visible with whatever uh, character you import in, you want to select everything, right click and just group that. Then just double click over here and I'm going to call this T-Pose. Okay. Now go ahead and select the T-Pose, go to Animate, Add Motion Clip. So by default this is going to be selected and this is the only time we're going to leave this option selected. It will only be for the T-Pose. Every other animation that we include, we are going to deselect this. But since this is the T-Pose, that should be selected and then click on OK. So now it creates a motion clip and you'll see this icon has been generated which is a motion system. So now I can open this up in the timeline and this pops up. So now we can actually go ahead and start bringing in the other animations. So I'll go to File, Merge, and let's bring in the Jog. Well, I just named mine Jog. This is the running animation that we selected. I'm going to click on No. Remember to group this. Right now, just call this Jog. And while this is selected, go to Animate, Add Motion Clip. And remember to uh, deselect this because this is not a T-Pose animation. Every other animation, we're going to have this deselected. And then click on OK. And you'll see that it adds that jog animation to our timeline. So this is the T-Pose timeline, this one over here. And now we can actually go ahead and hide this jog animation. So we've got our jog animation in the timeline and now I can simply just drag and drop it into the section. So to actually scrub on this timeline, with this icon if I scrub left or right, I move left or right. And with this icon if I scrub up or down, it zooms in and out. So you can see over here, here's our jog animation. I've placed it in front of the T-Pose. And now if I go to my timeline and I just scrub forward, you'll see that it goes from the T-Pose into the running animation. But one thing you'll notice is that that animation happened so abruptly, it's actually quite jarring that you have a T-Pose and then immediately the character's arms are down on their side. So to get that to transition a lot smoother, 
what you want to do is let me just zoom out here a little bit you want to uh, allow a little bit more frames for the T pose so I'll bring this all the way up to 10 okay and then we want to overlap this animation on the T pose so I'll bring this all the way back to 5 no I'll bring this actually all the way back to 2 so now it's going to be a much smoother transition you'll see when I scrub forward the character's arms actually gradually go down and then it transitions into that run okay so now I also want you to go to filter and just make sure you've got ghosting enabled so that you can see uh, this uh, outline of the character so currently we just have the character in the T pose and then he starts running and he only jogs once what if you want to create a continuous jogging cycle so to do that is really simple select the jog in the timeline hold on control and drag this forward to create a duplicate now I'm going to snap this to the end of my jog so right now we duplicated the jogging cycle but I want you to take notice of something if I go to my timeline the character will jog and then the second jog starts right now but notice that that second jog snaps all the way back to the the starting point over here where our T pose was so how do we make this continuous so that this jog continues from where this character stopped jogging okay and to do this is really simple so go back to your timeline select the second jog and then on the right hand side under motion clip you'll see that there's an advanced tab so this is the lifesaver over here you want to create a create pivot once you've created a pivot you want to make sure that this icon is on world coordinate so you should see that icon now I'm going to press my middle mouse button and go to the right view and now if I just simply move this pivot forward for our second jog and line it up with where the character stops jogging for the first sequence you'll notice right now if I scrub the character will continue jogging from that point so this is the magic and that's the lifesaver it's that pivot point and this is exactly how you reposition uh, animations and get them to run continuously so now we have a nice jogging sequence right that runs through the entire sequence twice and it was as simple as creating that pivot point to make it continuous now let's go ahead and import another animation so I'm gonna go to file merge and I want to import the animation where the character turns around okay so just like we did previously I'm going to click on no create a group and I'm going to call this turn around have, make sure that's selected go to animate add motion clip make sure that's deselected click on OK now I'm just going to go to perspective okay so uh, if we go to our timeline we can see how we've got the turnaround animation over here so I want to make sure that this animation I'm going to drag it onto the timeline I want this to overlap my second jog animation just a little bit so the transition is a little bit smoother and again you'll notice let me just go ahead and actually hide the turnaround so that's not visible okay so the character runs but again just like what happened previously the pivot point is now snapping back over here so we need to make sure we go to the timeline select this go to advance and create a pivot select that pivot and position this accordingly so let me just see where the character is. so our character will stop running in the front so line this up let me go to the right view just line this up also it requires a little bit of trial and error so that you're lining this up correctly so let's see character is going to stop running over here so there we go so he'll stop there and then he turns around and now he's running in that direction and just be, by creating a little bit of an overlap as you can see I'm moving this up and down so that the character's feet are planted on the exact same uh, axis or height so this definitely requires some trial and error for getting it to line up correctly but there we go so the character will get to the end he's like whoa nope I'm gonna go in the other direction and he's gonna start running the other way and we overlap that animation and created a pivot point for that now let's bring in the last animation where the character falls over so I'll go to fall flat okay make a group call this fall and animate add motion clip click on OK select this and actually hide this because now it's been added to my motion clip section over here 
So let's add our final animation, which is going to be fall. And I want this to overlap as well. So let's see what's happening on our timeline. So the character is going to turn around. Now I need to uh, uh, allow more frames over here. So I'll actually put this on 200, just so I'll make sure there's enough frames. So it's going to run. And again, we have the exact same issue with the pivot. So this is just rinsing and repeating the exact same techniques. Create a pivot for fall. And let's select that pivot. Now in this case, we're actually going to have to rotate this pivot point around because the character is falling in the wrong direction. Right, he's running, but he's falling in the opposite direction. So since we've got world coordinates selected, just go to rotate and rotate this around. Now again, you're going to, actually I should hold on shift and rotate that in increments. Sorry, uh, not shift. Yeah, it is shift. Hold that in shift just to rotate in increments. You go and just position this accordingly. So let's see, my character stops running over there. So I'll just position this a little bit further back. Also, I want to look at it from this angle because sometimes your character might be off center like that and if the animation runs, he's literally going to snap over there. So just be mindful of that. I'm keeping everything in one straight line. So let me just see how this runs. Here we go. So I'm going to have to move this back a little bit. And this is just trial and error, right? Trial and error. Let me rotate this so this is straight. And also you can see his feet are going off the ground, so I want to angle that maybe down a little bit more. Let me just see. Bring this down a bit, because I don't want him to basically go off the ground. This is why I said this requires trial and error when it comes to positioning this, but I want to record the entire process so you can see exactly what's happening. Now you can see when he's falling, he's at an angle, so I probably want that to be straight. But there we go, so he runs, he gets to the end of that sequence, he's like, whoa, and then he falls over. Now I just want to go ahead and hide the ghosting, just so I can look at this. He's going to run, turn around, whoa, boom, and then he falls over. Again, it's as simple as that to create these continuous running, uh, these continuous uh, animations. Okay, so that's the entire process for combining Mixamo animations to create a continuous running animation from where the previous animation stopped. Uh, but now let's say you want to actually take this out of the program, maybe over to Marvelous Designer where you can create some clothing. I would select the T-Pose, go to File, Export, Alembic, and then I want to use Alembic HDF5 Legacy. And now my entire animation runs for 176 frames, so I want to make sure it's on 176 like that and everything else should be good to go and then you can click on OK and export that out and you can import that into Marvelous Designer. Okay and let me show you how to prepare this file for a more common format which is FBX so maybe if you wanted to use the character in Maya, 3D Studio Max or Blender this is how you prepare the FBX file so select the T-Pose click on this icon and open the timeline now select your entire animation just by clicking and dragging, go to Motion System and click on Bake Clips. So it bakes it into one clip. Select that one clip, go to Motion System and Convert Layer to Keyframe Animation. And we are officially done. So if I close that, go to my T-Pose and select the Mixamo Rig, you'll see a whole bunch of keyframes at the bottom, which means the process has been completed successfully. And if I scrub through here, there's our entire combined animation and this is good to go. So if I was going to export this out as an FBX, I would only want this T-Pose file. So everything else would be selected and deleted because this is all I want. Okay, I'll select everything here. Then just go to File, Export, FBX. These are going to be my export settings. I'm using 7.5 for my FBX version. And then just save this to my desktop. And there we go. So having the FBX version is really useful because if I create a new project, go to File, Merge, I can just simply import that FBX file. These are my default import settings. 
and here is the T-Pose. So actually this Cinema 4D camera, I don't need that. But now I can hold on control and actually duplicate my character. And I've got two of them doing the exact same animation. Or I can have this guy running in the opposite direction. And that's cool. Alright, so you can have a whole bunch of these guys running and falling all over the place. So create an army of ninjas just running and falling. <laughs> it's, it's completely up to you. So there we go. Now if I play that. And they run in, they run in, and they all fall down just now. Well, this is 176 frames. There we go. Boom. So we've got four ninjas all falling down at the exact same time. And that's what's really cool about having the the uh, animation saved out as an FPX because you can do stuff like this by duplicating and even changing the ori uh, orientation. All right, so that's going to be the end of this tutorial. Now you know how to combine these animations together. You can see just how easy it is. And this is a really fun process. You can create some very complex animations. We did something quite basic over here, but it still shows you the entire workflow for setting this up. So I hope this has been useful. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And I truly appreciate the support on this channel so much. Thank you so much for watching my videos and tutorials. Stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials and goodbye.